Dennis Lee Hopper was an American actor, filmmaker, photographer, and artist. He attended the Actors Studio, making his first television appearance in 1954, and soon after appeared in two films with James Dean. In the next ten years he made a name in television, and by the end of the 1960s had appeared in several films. Hopper also began a prolific and acclaimed photography career in the 1960s. In 1969 Hopper directed and starred in Easy Rider, winning an award at the Cannes Film Festival, and was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Original Screenplay as co-writer. Journalist Anne Hornaday wrote, with its portrait of counterculture heroes raising their middle fingers to the uptight middle-class hypocrisies. Easy Rider became the cinematic symbol of the 1960s, a celluloid anthem to freedom, macho bravado and anti-establishment rebellion. Film critic Matthew Hayes notes that, no other persona better signifies the lost idealism of the 1960s than that of Dennis Hopper. Hopper was unable to build on his success for several years, until the fame brought by his role as the American photojournalist in Apocalypse Now. He then appeared in Rumblefish and the Ostermin Weekend, and received critical recognition for his acting in Blue Velvet and His Ears with the latter film garnering him an Academy Award nomination for Best Supporting Actor. In 1988 he directed Colors, and in the following years played the eponymous lead character in Paris Trout. He played numerous villains including Speed, King Cooper in Super Mario Bros., and in Waterworld. Hopper also played heroes, such as John Canyon in Space Truckers. Hopper later work included a leading role in the television series, Crash. His last performance was filmed just before his death. The last film festival, originally slated for a 2011 release, Early Life. Hopper was born Dennis Lee Hopper on May 17, 1936, in Dodge City, Kansas, the son of Marjorie May and James Millard Hopper. He had Scottish ancestors. Hopper had two brothers, Marvin and David. At the age of 13, Hopper and his family moved to San Diego, where his mother worked as a lifeguard instructor and his father was a post office manager. Hopper was voted most likely to succeed at Helix High School, where he was active in the drama club, speech and choir. It was there that he developed an interest in acting, studying at the Old Globe Theatre in San Diego, and the Actors Studio in New York City. Hopper struck up a friendship with actor Vincent Price, whose passion for art influenced Hopper's interest in art. He was especially fond of the plays of William Shakespeare. Career Film Hopper was reported to have an uncredited role in Johnny Guitar in 1954 but he has stated that he was not even in Hollywood when this film was made. Hopper made his debut on film in two roles with James Dean in Rebel Without a Cause and Giant. Dean's death in a 1955 car accident affected the young Hopper deeply and it was shortly afterwards that he got into a confrontation with veteran. Director Henry Hathaway on the film From Hell to Texas, Hopper forced Hathaway to shoot more than 80 takes of a scene over several days before he acquiesced to Hathaway's direction. After filming was finally completed, Hathaway allegedly told Hopper that his career in Hollywood was finished. In his book Last Train to Memphis, American popular music historian Peter Guralnick says that in 1956, when Elvis Presley was making his first film in Hollywood, Hopper was roommates with fellow actor Nick Adams and the three became friends and socialized together. In 1959 Hopper moved to New York to study method acting under Lee Strasberg at the Actors Studio. In 1961, Hopper played his first lead role in Night Tide, an atmospheric supernatural thriller involving a mermaid in an amusement park. In a December 1994 interview on The Charlie Rose Show, Hopper credited John Wayne with saving his career, as Hopper acknowledged that because of his insolent behavior, he could not find work in Hollywood for seven years. 
Hopper stated that because he was the son-in-law of actress Margaret Sullivan, a friend of John Wayne, Wayne hired Hopper for a role in The Sons of Katie Elder, also directed by Hathaway, which enabled Hopper to restart his film career. Hopper acted in another John Wayne film, True Grit, and during its production he became well acquainted with Wayne. In both of the films with Wayne Hopper character is killed in the presence of Wayne's character, to whom he utters his dying words. Hopper had a supporting role as the bet taker, Babalu Gats, in Cool Hand Luke. In 1968, Hopper teamed with Peter Fonda, Terry Southern and Jack Nicholson to make Easy Rider, which premiered in July 1969. With the release of True Grit a month earlier, Hopper had starring roles in two major box office films that summer. Hopper won wide acclaim as the director for his improvisational methods and innovative editing for Easy Rider. The production was plagued by creative differences and personal acrimony between Fonda and Hopper, the disillusion of Hopper marriage to Hayward, his unwillingness to leave the editor's desk and his accelerating abuse of drugs and alcohol. Hopper said of Easy Rider, The cocaine problem in the United States is really because of me. There was no cocaine before Easy Rider on the street. After Easy Rider, it was everywhere. In 1971, Hopper released the last movie, expecting an accessible follow-up to Easy Rider. Audiences were treated to artistic flourishes and a hazily existentialist plot that dabbled in non-linearity and the absurd. The film was dismissed by audiences and critics alike during its first domestic engagement in New York City. During the tumultuous editing process, Hopper ensconced himself at the Mabel Dodge Lewin House in Taos, New Mexico, which he had purchased in 1970, for almost an entire year. In between contesting Fonda's rights to the majority of the residual profits from Easy Rider, he married Michelle Phillips in October 1970. Hopper was able to sustain his lifestyle and a measure of celebrity by acting in numerous low-budget and European films throughout the 1970s as the archetypical tormented maniac, including Mad Dog Morgan, Trax, and The American Friend. With Francis Ford Coppola's blockbuster Apocalypse Now, Hopper returned to prominence as a hypermanic Vietnam-era photojournalist. Stepping in for an overwhelmed director, Hopper won praise in 1980 for his directing and acting in Out of the Blue. Immediately thereafter, Hopper starred as an adult short-order cook cracker in the Neil Young, Dean Stockwell low-budget collaboration Human Highway. Production was reportedly often delayed by his unreliable behavior. Peter Biskin states in the new Hollywood history Easy Riders, raging balls that Hopper cocaine intake had reached 3 grams a day by this time, complemented by 30 beers and some marijuana and Cuba libas. After staging a suicide attempt in a coffin using 17 sticks of dynamite during an art happening at the Rice University Media Center, and later disappearing into the Mexican desert during a particularly extravagant bender, Hopper entered a drug rehabilitation program in 1983. Though Hopper gave critically acclaimed performances in Rumblefish and the Ostermin Weekend, it was not until he portrayed the gas huffing, obscenity screaming iconic villain Frank Booth in David Lynch's Blue Velvet that his career truly revived. On reading the script Hopper said to Lynch, You have to let me play Frank Booth. Because I am Frank Booth, he won critical acclaim and several awards for this role, and in the same year received an Oscar nomination for Best Supporting Actor for his role as an alcoholic assistant basketball coach in Hoosiers. In 1988, Hopper directed the critically acclaimed Colors. He was nominated for an Emmy Award for the 1991 HBO films Paris Trout and Double Crossed. In 1993, he played Clifford Worley in True Romance. He co-starred in the 1994 blockbuster Speed with Keanu Reeves and Sandra Bullock, and as magic-phobic H.P. Lovecraft in the TV movie Witch Hunt. 
1995, Hopper played a greedy TV self-help guru, Dr. Luther Waxling in Search and Destroy. The same year, he starred as Deacon, the one-eyed nemesis of Kevin Costner in Waterworld, and in 1996 he starred in the science fiction comedy Space Truck as directed by Stuart Gordon. In 2003, Hopper was in the running for the dual lead in the indie horror drama Firecracker but was ousted at the last minute in favor of Mike Patton. In 2005, Hopper played Paul Kaufman in George A. Romero's Land of the Dead. In 2008, Hopper starred in An American Carol. In 2008 he also played the death in W.I.M. Wenders' Palermo shooting. His last major feature film appearance was in the 2008 film Elegy with So Ben Kingsley, Penelo Cruz and Debbie Harry. For his last performance, he was the voice of Tony, the alpha male of the Eastern Wolf Pack inside the 2010 3D computer animated film Alpha and Omega. He died before the movie was released. This brought the directors to dedicate the film to his memory at the beginning of the movie credits. Television Hopper debuted in an episode of the Richard Boone television series Medic in 1955, portraying a young epileptic. He appeared as an arrogant young gunfighter, the Utah Kid, in the 1956 episode Quicksand of the first hour-long television western television series ABC's Cheyenne, starring Clint Walker. In the storyline, the Kid gave Cheyenne Bodie no choice but to kill him in a gunfight. In 1957, he played Billy the Kid on the episode Brannigan's Boots of ABC's Sugarfoot with Will Hutchins. He subsequently appeared in over 140 episodes of television shows such as Gunsmoke, Bonanza, Petticoat Junction, The Twilight Zone, The Barbara Stanwyck Show, The Defenders, The Investigators, The Legend of Jesse James, Entourage, The Big Valley, The Time Tunnel, The Rifleman in which he appeared in the premiere episode as a sharpshooter and combat. Hopper teamed with Nike in the early 1990s to make a series of television commercials. He appeared as a crazed referee in those ads. He portrayed villain Victor Drazen in the first season of the popular drama 24 on the Fox television network. Hopper starred as a U.S. Army Colonel in the NBC 2005 television series E-Ring, a drama set at the Pentagon, but the series was cancelled after 14 episodes aired in the USA. Hopper appeared in all 22 episodes that were filmed. He also played the part of record producer Ben Sondars in the Stars television series Crash, which lasted two seasons. Photography and Art Hopper had several artistic pursuits beyond film. He was a prolific photographer, painter, and sculptor. Hopper's fascination with art began with painting lessons at the Nelson Atkins Museum while still a child in Kansas City, Missouri. Early in his career, he painted and wrote poetry, though many of his works were destroyed in a 1961 fire that burned scores of homes, including his on Stone Canyon Road in Bel Air. His painting style ranges from abstract impressionism to photorealism and often includes references to his cinematic work and to other artists. Ostracized by the Hollywood film studios due to his reputation for being a difficult actor, Hopper eventually turned to photography in the 1960s with a Nikon camera bought for him by his first wife, Brooke Hayward. During this period he created the cover art for the icon Tina Turner single River Deep, Mountain High. He would become a prolific photographer, and noted writer Terry Southern profiled Hopper in Better Homes and Gardens magazine as an up-and-coming photographer to watch in the mid-1960s. Hopper early photography is known for portraits from the 1960s, and he began shooting portraits for Vogue and other magazines. His photographs of Martin Luther King, J.R.'s 1963 March on Washington and 1965 Civil Rights March in Selma, Alabama, were published. His intimate and unguarded images of celebrities like Andy Warhol and Jane Fonda were the subject of gallery shows and were collected in a book. 
1712 North Crescent Heights, the book, whose title was his address in the Hollywood Hills in the 1960s, was edited by Marin Hopper. In 1960-67, before the making of Easy Rider, Hopper shot a selection of groundbreaking images that is seen as telling a remarkable history of art, artist, places and events of that time. Dennis Hopper, Photographs 1961-1967 was published in February, 2011, by Taschen. Hopper began working as a painter and a poet as well as a collector of art in the 1960s as well, particularly pop art. Over his lifetime he amassed a formidable array of 20th and 21st century art including many of Julian Schnabel's works, numerous works from his early cohorts, such as Ed Rusher, Edward Keenholtz, Roy Lichtenstein, and Warhol, and pieces by contemporary artists such as Damien Hirst and Robin Road. He was involved in L.A.'s Virginia Dwan and Ferris Galleries of the 1960s, and he was a longtime friend and supporter to New York dealer Tony Shafrazi. One of the first artworks Hopper owned was an early print of Andy Warhol's Campbell's Soup Cans bought for $75. Hopper also once owned Andy Warhol's Mao which he shot one evening in a fit of paranoia, the two bullet holes possibly adding to the print's value. The print sold at Christie's, New York, for $302,500 in January 2011. The proceeds of the two-day sale of some 300 pieces from Hopper Collection at Christie's went to his four children. During his lifetime, Hopper's own work as well as his collection was shown in monographic and group exhibitions around the world including the Corcoran Gallery of Art. Washington, D.C., Walker Art Center, Minneapolis, Minnesota, the Stedeligent Museum, Amsterdam, the State Hermitage Museum, St. Petersburg, Mac Vienna, Austrian Museum of Applied Arts, Contemporary Art, Vienna, the Whitney Museum of American Art, New York, and the Cinémathèque Française, Paris and the Australian Centre for the Moving Image, Melbourne. In March 2010, it was announced that Harper was on that shortlist for Jeffrey Deitch's inaugural show at the Museum of Contemporary Art, Los Angeles. In April 2010, Deitch confirmed that Harper work, curated by Julian Schnabel, will indeed be the focus of his debut at MoCA. The title of the exhibition, Double Standard, was taken from Hopper iconic 1961 photograph of the two standard oil signs seen through an automobile windshield at the intersection of Santa Monica Boulevard, Melrose Avenue, and North Doheny Drive on historic Route 66 in Los Angeles. The image was reproduced on the invitation for Ed Rush's second solo exhibition at Ferris Gallery in 1964. On March 5, 2013, HarperCollins will publish a biography on Hopper by American writer Tom Folsom, Hopper, A Journey into the American Dream, on the Gorillaz album Demon Days. Hopper narrates the song, Fire Coming Out of the Monkey's Head. In the late 1980s Hopper purchased a trio of nearly identical two-story, loft-style condominiums at 330 Indiana Avenue in Venice Beach, California, one made of concrete, one of plywood, and one of green roofing shingles, built by Frank Gehry and two artist friends of Hopper, Chuck Carnaldi and Laddie John Deal, in 1981. In 1987, he commissioned an industrial-style main residence, with a corrugated metal exterior designed by Brian Murphy, as a place to display his artwork.